Thank you very much, Mark, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to be wrapping up this two-day, very full training session with some technical training information. Now, some of the information that I'll be presenting will be a review to many of you, and some of the information that I'll be presenting might be new information. Uh, the focus of my training will be to provide you with tools that will allow you to monitor your facility's compliance with the quality reporting uh, program, or QRP, requirements set forth by CMS. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll move on past that. There we go. Um, <laughs> the objectives for today, and I think I moved one, two. No? The objectives today will be to, uh, once, once you hear my training, you should be able to describe uh, the uh, methods that will be used to monitor CMS's data submission requirements for the ERF QRP program. You'll be able to discuss how to locate and interpret your final validation report. You'll be able to describe other useful CASPER reports that are available to you. You'll be able to identify the 10 most common uh, warning messages and fatal errors that occurred for all EarthPi records that were processed in calendar year 2015. And you'll be able to describe an upcoming change to the CASPER report retention time frame that will occur later this summer. And finally, I'll be providing you with some technical uh, resources that you can use to assist you with the data submission process and accessing and utilizing the various CASPER reports available to you. And those two slides were out of order, so we've talked about that. So the three things that I would like to uh, discuss uh, right now are three different ways that you can monitor your success in meeting the QRP requirements. The first way that you can monitor your, uh, the success of the submission of the EarthPi data to the ASAP system, or that's also known as the Assessment Submission and Processing System, would be to access the final validation report and review it to ensure that the records are accepted into the national database. This report will provide detailed feedback for each record that could be successfully processed by the ASAP system, and it will indicate to you whether the record was accepted or rejected. Remember, it's not just that you're submitting the EarthPi records to the ASAP system, but it is that those records must be accepted into the national database in order for them to be considered for the quality reporting requirements. Later in this presentation, as I mentioned earlier, I'll be talking about some additional CASPER reports that can be used to help monitor your success in the data submission process. Um, I'd like to remind you, as you all know probably now, that this, you can monitor your submission of the CDC uh, or the HIA data to the CDC by logging into the uh, NHSN website. However, there is one CASPER report available to you in which you can track your submission of that CDC data as well. So I'll talk about that report um, in a few minutes. So the, let's start by talking about the final validation report. For the assessment of based measures, that's really where the, the analysis should begin. Many of you in the room are well versed with the submission of the EarthPi data uh, to CMS as that began in 2002. For those in the room that might be uh, newer to the process, I'll be discussing uh, the final validation report uh, so that you can understand how you can read the report and interpret whether those uh, EarthPi records were accepted and saved into the national database. The final validation report is automatically created once the file processing uh, process has completed for each of the records contained in the zip file. The final validation report is, uh, will be available to you within 24 hours of the submission of your data. The report is generated automatically for you if the ASAP system is able to read each of the records in the zip file. That means that if the ASAP system can um, access the XML records and identify the facility ID uh, within that record, it can verify the, uh, the facility to whom that record belongs, and then that record information will be displayed on the final validation report. 
Once the report is created, the ASAP system automatically stores that record or report in the your facility's VR or validation report folder. Now that VR folder is available in the CASPER reporting application. You will find a link for the CASPER reporting application on the Welcome to the CMS Key Systems for Providers webpage, which is the same webpage where you will access the IRFPI submission system link to uh, upload your IRFPI records to CMS. You will use your uh, keys, user ID, and password to access either of these systems. Because of uh, the, the amount of uh, time that we have today, I'm not going to go step by step and demonstrate how to uh, submit your data to the ASAP system, how to log into the CASPER reporting application and locate the VR folder and subsequently the final validation report. Instead, I'd like to refer you to the IRFPI Submission User's Guide, which is available to you. This user's guide will provide you with detailed step-by-step -step instructions if you're new to the data submission process. It will also demonstrate how to log into the CASPER reporting application to locate your VR folder and the final validation report. The user's guide is available in the two locations that you'll see on the slide. First, you can find the user's guide available on the Welcome to the CMS Key Systems for Providers webpage. That's the same webpage where you'll find the links for the IRFPI submission system and the CASPER reporting application. The user's guide is also available on our CUTSO, or Keys Technical Support Office, website. Specifically, the, web, the manual will be available on the IRFPI user guides and training page. And I've included a link to that page on the CUTSO website for your reference. The CUTSO website is a public website, so you're not uh, required to enter any credentials in order to access these user guides. That means you don't have to have a user ID and password to access those guides. So let's talk a little more specifically about the final validation report. As I mentioned, it provides detailed feedback about the record processing status for each of the IRFPI records in the zip file that could be read by the ASAP system. It will only display the record information, as I said, if the facility ID in the file could be verified by the ASAP system. The final validation report, that is the ASAP system uh, automatically created final validation report, is automatically stored in your validation report folder, and it is automatically deleted after 60 days. So CMS highly encourages that you access these reports after each submission, print or save a copy, and then review the results of the submission file processing. If uh, by chance you happen to review the report online but you fail to print or save a copy, you can recreate a final validation report using the IRFPI facility final validation report that's available in uh, the CASPER reporting application. And I'll discuss that a bit more in a few moments. Sorry about that. As I mentioned, the final validation report is automatically created and stored in your VR folder within 24 hours of submission of the file. If after 24 hours you have not located the validation report for the submission that you performed, that is an indicator that there was a severe error with either the zip file or the records within the zip file. When this occurs, you must request the IRFPI submitter validation report. The IRFPI submitter validation report will return um, much of the same detailed information as the system generated report, but it, re, it re, will return information about those records that um, in which a facility ID could not be verified. So it's a very useful report if you're um, trying to determine the errors that might have occurred in the records uh, and you did not receive a validation report. And here's a picture of the validation report. I'm sure many of you are uh, familiar with this report. This report um, has two components or sections. There's a header section 
and there is a body section. The header section will contain um, a summary or facility type information. So presented to you in the header section would be such information as the submission date and time, which is the uh, date and time that you uploaded the file to the ASAP system. It will display the submission ID, which is that unique number that's assigned to your file, and it will link all of the records uh, within that file together. It will display your facility information, such as your facility name, CCN, or and facility ID. And it will also summarize the record processing information. For example, you would uh, be able to view uh, the number of records that were processed from the file, the number of records that were accepted, and the number of records that were rejected. The body of the report really contains the detailed information about the records themselves. So let's go ahead and look at a picture uh, more closely of this particular information that will display for each record that could be processed by the ASAP system. You'll notice that there is a record number in the left upper corner. That record number merely indicates the order in which the records from the zip file were processed by the ASAP system. When your file is submitted to the ASAP system, the ASAP system logically orders those records so that they can be processed in a logical fashion. For example, if there happened to be a record for a patient, a new record for a patient, and a modification record for a patient in the same file, the ASAP system would uh, logically process the new record followed by the modification record. In the at the, the top of the right column, you'll see that there is the processing status. The processing status indicates the uh, status of the file processing. In this example, you see that this record was rejected. There are two statuses that can display in this field. Accepted, which is the status that we want all of the IRFPI records to be in, or rejected. It is, it is very important to access your validation report and look at the record status or processing status for each record in your file because you certainly want to ensure that if you have a record that's been rejected that corrective actions are taken and that record is resubmitted so that it can be saved into the ASAP system. Also displayed with for each record is the basic information about the record such as the admission date and discharge date and basic patient information, such as the patient's last name, first name, social security number, and Medicare number. In our example here, you'll see that beneath the record and patient information, there is the error message information. Now, the error information only displays with the record if the record encountered either a fatal, one or more fatal errors or one or more warning messages. If no errors occurred as a result of file processing, the error information simply won't display. You'll simply see the record and patient information. And you'll see in this example um, that this particular record was rejected with error number 903, uh, which is the required item was missing or invalid. The ASAP system expected this particular item listed in the IRF items field to be submitted, but it was not. Therefore, uh, the ASAP system rejected the record. And here's a closer look at the information that will display if the error messages are present for a record. The final validation report will display the IRF item or items in error. It will display the data that was submitted for that particular item. It will display the error message number and the type of error, that is, whether it was a fatal error or a warning message. And it will give you the warning message or the error message description. And that description is just a brief uh, statement that gives you an indication why that record uh, encountered the error. As I mentioned, it's very important for you to identify the record processing status for each of the IRFPI records submitted to the ASAP system. Uh, the accepted record status is the status that you want to see with all of your IRFPI records. This means that the IRFPI record encountered no fatal errors and that record was saved into the national database. 
Um, it is uh, important to know that a record could have just one or more warning messages and still be saved into the national database. That's certainly okay. At the point where a record encounters one or more fatal errors, that record is rejected and is not saved into the database. So what should you do if you have errors returned on your validation report for an IRFPI record? If your record is rejected, you should correct the items that were in error in your data entry software and resubmit that record to the ASAP system. There are a few exceptions to this rule, and one of those exceptions is if you receive the duplicate record error. If you receive error 907, which is the duplicate assessment error, this means that that particular assessment, based on the record and patient identifiers, already exists in the ASAP system, so it's unnecessary to resubmit that record. If your IRFPI record encounters warning messages, you will want to review each of those warning messages to determine whether any additional action is required. And a few minutes later uh, in the presentation, I'll be talking about the top 10 uh, fatal errors and warning messages that occurred on the IRFPI records. So I'll give you some examples of the warning messages that you might see so that you can uh, understand how to address those. So that really completes the overview of the final validation report. Again, I would encourage you to look at the IRFPI submission user's guide should you have additional questions about accessing uh, or interpreting the final validation report. I'd like to move on now to talk about a few other CASPER reports that would be beneficial to you. In the next two slides, you'll see that I've listed each of the, val uh, the uh, IRF reports that are available in the IRFPI provider report category in CASPER. And all of the submitter users who have a keys user ID to submit IRFPI data will have access to this IRFPI provider report category. I'm not going to uh, discuss each of the reports listed on the slides. I've just highlighted a few to, uh, to inform you about. So the first one I'd like to start with is the IRF Provider Participation Report. This report details the submission status of the measures required for the Annual Payment Update, or APU. The data on this report is displayed based on the fiscal year. It will display the percentage of assessments that uh, are meeting the data completion threshold, um, and those assessment-based measures are the uh, percent of residents or patients with uh, pressure ulcers that are new or worsened. And the other assessment-based measure is the percent of residents or patients who were assessed and appropriately given the uh, it seasonal influenza vaccine. In addition to displaying with each measure, you will see that the total number of records that were submitted for a particular time period will display, and the time periods displayed are by month by quarter, and by year. The report will also show you the, the data submission deadline for, collect, for the collection period. It's important to, re, to remember that in order for your IRFPI assessment to be counted uh, you, for the data collection time period that you must submit it prior to the end of that collection period. And this report will also show you uh, the your facility's target percentage for assessments meeting the data completion threshold. And we know that the, the target percentage is 95%, so you can compare your facility's percentage to the target percentage by looking at this report. The report also identifies whether your facility uh, submitted the CDC reporting plan, event data, and summary data uh, for the, as required monthly. The report includes uh, the breakdown of information for the four uh, HAI, HAI measures, including CAUTI, MRSA, CDI, and the influence of vaccination coverage among the healthcare personnel. Uh, previous to this week, this report was available for fiscal year 2017 only. Earlier this week, the, the report was updated, and now you all can request the report for fiscal year 2018. So I would encourage you when you return 
to your facilities that you uh, request this report and review the status of your assessment and CDC data submission. One other thing I'd like to say about this report, you'll see on the slide that uh, coming this fall, this report title will be changed. It will be updated to uh, reflect the ERF provider threshold report. The remainder of the report will remain unchanged. It's just that the title is being updated so that it will coincide with other uh, threshold type reports for different providers. The next report I'd like to talk about is the Earth Pie Assessments with Air Number XXXX report. This report will list the assessments uh, submitted during a particular time period with a spe specified error. So for example, if you would like to track the particular assessments during a, a given time frame that you enter in the CASPER reporting application that might have received error 5004, that is that warning message you receive if a dash has been entered in a quality item, then you would request this report for the time period and for Air 5004. On the report, you will see a list of all of the assessments that, that for which that air returned. You will see the uh, patient's name, and uh, so you can easily track those uh, assessments that contained a dash in one or more of the quality items. So it's a very useful report. Uh, to use rather than trying to uh, glean the individual records from the final validation reports to, to compile a list of all those assessments that received Air 5004. The Earth Pi Discharges Report would be useful so that you can identify and ensure that all of your discharged patients have an Earth Pi uh, record accepted into the ASAP system. You can request this report for a time period that you desire, and then you can verify that each of those discharge patients has an accepted record. And we move on. There are several other air type reports in the Earth Pi Provider Report category, and I would encourage you to go in and request the reports and then review the information in the CASPER Reporting User's Guide. But in the essence of time, I'm not going to describe each of those error reports. They will provide different um, ways for you to analyze the errors that are occurring for your IRFPI records. So you might find a particular report that works best in, in the way you want to analyze your data. The next report that I'd like to discuss is the IRFPI Facility Final Validation Report. Remember that I mentioned that your system-generated final validation reports are automatically deleted from your validation report folder after 60 days. If you did not have the opportunity to print or save a copy of this report before it was deleted, you could request the IRFPI Facility Final Validation Report from your IRFPI Provider Report category um, and recreate that report and keep it for your records. The IRFPI Submission Activity Report will detail a list of the accepted assessments that were submitted during a particular time period. This is another way that you can track whether your discharge patients have had an IRFPI record accepted into the national database. If you'd like to uh, review a summary of the submissions that have been performed over a certain period of time, you would want to request the IRFPI Submission Statistics by Facility Report. This report will summarize, based on the time frame that you select, each of the submissions that occurred during that time period. So you'll be presented with information such as the submission date and time, the submission ID of the file, and a summary of the processing status of the records in that submission file. For example, you would see the number of records that were accepted, the number of records that were rejected, and so on. And finally, I mentioned earlier the IRFPI Submitter Final Validation Report. This report is important to utilize if you do not get a system-generated final validation report within 24 hours after submission of your file. This report must be requested by the user ID or the individual who submitted the original file of IRFPI records to the ASAP system. 
and it will contain, as I said, the same detailed information as the system generated report, but it, in addition, it includes any records that could not be processed by the ASAP system, so you can clearly understand the errors that occurred for those particular records. Detailed information about each of these CASPER reports is available in the CASPER Reporting User Guide. This user's guide uh, is available on the Welcome to the CMS Key Systems for Providers webpage and also on the CUTSO website, as you see on the slide here. The CASPER Guide not only outlines the information about all the reports that were listed on the slides, but it will also provide you information about how to use the CASPER reporting application if you want to request reports or print or save reports. So let's take a moment and check your understanding. So if, for those at the tables, if you want to, to grab the polling devices, we'll go ahead and get started. The first question is, which CASPER report can be requested to confirm that an IRFPI assessment was accepted into the ASAP system for a selected time period? Would that be A, the IRFPI Facility Final Validation Report, B, the IRFPI Discharges Report, C, the IRFPI Submission Activity Report, or D, all of the above? So I'll go ahead and start the timer, and you can begin registering your answer. And let's go ahead and check and see how, how we're doing with the polling. All right, very good. Thank you for participating. The correct answer is D, all of the above. Each one of the three reports listed could be used to uh, confirm that an IRFPI assessment was accepted into the ASAP system. And a second question. Which CASPER report could be used to identify your provider's compliance with the CDC data submission requirements? Would that be Report A, IRFPI Submission Statistics Report, Letter B, the IRF Provider Participation, or soon to be called IRF Provider Threshold Report, C, the IRFPI Submission Activity Report, or D, none of the above? I'll start the ticker. You all want to register your, your uh, responses. All right, let's check and see how we're doing. Very good. Yes, uh, letter B is the correct answer. The IRFPI provi Provider Participation Report would be the report in which you can monitor your uh, submission of CD the HI HAI data to the CDC. Great job. Thanks for participating. That concludes the section about the CASPER reports that I wanted to provide to you. Now I'd like to move on and discuss the 10 most common errors that occurred for all IRFPI records for calendar year 2015. In order to better understand the errors, what caused the error to occur, and what actions should be taken to correct the error, I've categorized the errors, um, the fatal types of errors, and the warning messages. So there are three categories of fatal errors. The first is the workflow error. You can think of this error as something that you have control over. For example, you might have a sub submission procedural issue, such as submitting um, an IRFPI record that already exists in the national database, and, in, and, and when that happens, then you would get error 907, the duplicate record message. Or there might be submission authority issues. For example, if we have folks in the audience who are corporate uh, users or third-party vendors, um, perhaps there could be an issue with uh, submitting an IRFPI record for a facility to which that user doesn't have access. In that instance, those records are rejected. So those would be workflow type errors. A 
a user type error uh, example would be one in which um, when you're encoding or entering your answers in the front end software, you enter an invalid response for a particular item. Um, it would be a user error if your software presented a message to you notifying you that the response was invalid or you skipped over a question, but you chose to ignore the message and submit the uh, record to the ASAP system anyway. In, in that instance, this would be your user error because you didn't um, act upon the warning message provided by your software. And finally, there are software errors. Uh, when a software error occurs, this indicates that the software was not following all the requirements outlined in the data submission specifications. And I have some common types of warning messages as well. We have timing errors that could occur for your IRFPI records. And those uh, timing errors simply indicate that the records were not completed or submitted in a timely fashion. The second type of uh, category would be a dash entered in a quality item. And as I've mentioned a couple of times, that would be error 5004 that would return for those uh, quality items that contained a dash in the IRFPI record. And finally, I'm sure many of you have seen the information updated sort of messages on the validation report. And those could be a provider information updated message or a patient information updated message. So let's go ahead and take a look at those, those 10 most common errors. The, the most prevalent error of all errors uh, was error 907, the duplicate record error. This is a fatal error. As I said, this occurs when the submitted IRFPI record has the same record and patient values of a record that's already been accepted into the ASAP system. We will not store duplicate records in the national database, so that submitted record is rejected. We consider this a provider workflow error. For some reason, that re record was resubmitted to the ASAP system when it should not have been. Um, so your, your actions when this error occurs is, first of all, not to resubmit the record another time and develop a mechanism to track those IRFPI records that have and have not yet been accepted into the ASAP system. Error 906 occurs when um, a modification or inactivation record is submitted to the ASAP system, but the ASAP system cannot locate a matching record already accepted in the database with which to modify or inactivate. This can occur um, for a couple of different reasons. This might occur if you're submitting a modification record before ever submitting uh, or having the original record accepted into the ASAP system. If that occurs, then you would simply uh, make the necessary corrections to that original record and submit it to the ASAP system um, and not submit the modification record. This error can also occur if the record and patient identifiers in the modification or inactivation record do not exactly match the record and patient identifiers in the record that's already saved in the database. If that is uh, the uh, cause of the issue, then you'll want to make sure to check your uh, record identifiers, such as the admission date, discharge date, and the patient identifiers, includes, including the patient's first and last name, birth date, gender, social security number, and ensure that those values in the modification or inactivation record exactly match the record that you wish to modify or inactivate. Error number 902 is an invalid XML file. This is a fatal error, and we, we categorize this as a software error with the assumption that um, the software is probably um, creating those XML records behind the scene and uh, appending a file name to that record. Um, when this error occurs, it indicates that there is uh, the file name extension is missing or invalid. Uh, the XML record should have a file extension of .xml. So if this error occurs, I would just encourage you to contact your vendor, and they can work with you to determine why the error occurred and help you make the necessary corrections so that you can resubmit that record to the ASAP system. And the final fatal error that I'm going to talk about is error 903. And we saw this uh, error listed on our sample final validation report a few minutes earlier. But this error occurs if the required item is missing or invalid. 
So if the ASAP system expects for an item uh, to be submitted in the XML record and it is not, then this error will occur. It will also occur if the item response submitted is invalid for that particular item. Um, so the corrective actions for this would then be to work with, uh, if, if this is caused by your software, then you can contact your software vendor and work with them to rectify the issue and resubmit the record to the ASAP system. Now if this is an error on your part because you entered an invalid value, and ignored the software errors that were presented to you, then that would be your user error and you would simply want to uh, return to your data entry software and put in uh, enter a valid response for that item and submit the record to the ASAP system. Now let's look at the most common warning messages that occurred. And the most prevalent warning message was error 1030, which is the patient provider updated message. This is simply a warning message and no action is required when this error displays on the validation report. This error merely indicates to you that a different provider was caring for this patient prior to the time that you submitted the IRFPI record for that patient. It's simply an informational message and, and no, you don't need to uh, have any action to correct that error. The next most common warning message was error 1031, the patient information mismatch warning. This occurs if the patient information submitted in the IRFPI record is different than the patient information in the national database uh, for that particular patient. So the patient information that could be different and updated from your IRFPI record would be the patient's first, middle, or last name, middle initial, the patient's gender, birth date, Social Security number, Medicare number, Medicaid number, or the race ethnicity items. So if the, if the information you're submitting in the IRFPI record for those particular items is different than the information that we have for the patient in the national database, then the national database is updated and, uh, and the message then is reported on your validation report. So what should you do if you see this warning message? It's important that you review the warning message to ensure that the information that was updated in the national database was accurate. Um, we will display on the validation report the old value for that particular identifier as well as the new value. So you can easily compare the two and then compare that information against the patient's Medicare card, for example, to ensure that the update was accurately performed. If the information that was submitted um, and updated the national database was inaccurate, then you must take corrective actions to um, uh, submit a, mod a modification and activation record to correct that erroneous information. Error 1072 is uh, an error I know that all of you uh, avoid at all costs, and that is uh, error, uh, the late transmission warning message. This message is returned when the discharge, the record, the IRFPI record is submitted more than 27 days after the discharge date. Um, this can affect your uh, reimbursement, so I know that you're all very um, uh, diligent to ensure that that error does not occur. But to avoid this in the future, just review the uh, assessment submission timing uh, regulations to ensure that your records are submitted in a timely fashion. Error number 1060 occurs um, when there is an inconsistency between the admission date, item 12, and the assessment reference date, item 13. And as you can see, the message says that the assessment reference date usually must be two days later than the admission date. So this is a warning message. It's a provider workflow error because um, the dates were more than uh, two days later uh, than the admission date. So to avoid this error in the future, simply uh, review your assessment timing uh, rules. Air 1024, facility information updated. Now this uh, warning message will only display if you are an IRF subunit. If you are an IRF subunit, you are allowed to update your facility information in the national database using the IRFPI record. So you can update your facility name, address, city, state, and zip code uh, through the IRFPI record that's submitted to the ASAP system. Um, 
If you are a rehab hospital, we do not allow you to do that. If your facility information needs to be updated and you're a rehab hospital, you must contact your regional office personnel and make the request for that update. So if, you receive, if you're a nurse subunit and you receive Air 1024, your action would then be to verify that the information that was updated and displayed on the validation report is accurate. If it is not, submit a modification record to correct that erroneous information. And here's Air 5004, that one that we want to watch for so much. Again, this occurs when a dash has been entered into a quality item, and this may affect your APU. Um, it is considered a user error because you have control over when the dashes are entered for those quality items. So it's most important to remember that you should limit the use of the dash as a coding option unless the requested information is truly unavailable. Frequent use of the response of the dash may result in a two percentage point reduction of the applicable fiscal year annual increase factor. So those were the top 10 errors that occurred for year 2015. Now there's certainly a good number of other errors that could happen as a result of the file processing. In order to see a list of all of those errors, you will want to refer to Section 5, Error Messages, which is one of the sections in the IRFPI Submission User's Guide. I would encourage especially the newer uh, submitters in the group to use Section 5 uh, along with the final validation report. So as you're reviewing the final validation report, you could, would be referring to Section 5. Section 5 will provide you um, the error message number and error message description, as well as an explanation about why the error occurred and some tips that you should take to correct the error or prevent the error in the future. And the next topic I want to talk about is the CASPER report retention time period change. So what does that mean? What's changing? Currently, the reports that you request from the IRFPI provider report category are, once you request the report, those reports are ma maintained in your My Inbox folder for a period of 730 days, which is two years. Beginning summer of 2016, the report retention time period for those reports will be changed to 60 days. That means all of the reports currently in your My Inbox folder that have a date requested date equal to or greater than 60 days old will be automatically deleted when we implement the report retention time period change. That will also apply to any new reports that are requested once the time period has changed. Any new reports requested from the IRFPI report category after the change will only be saved in your My Inbox folder for 60 days. So what should you do? You should begin now to print or save those reports should you wish to retain them. If you happen to not get them printed or saved prior to that report retention time period change and those reports are deleted, you can simply re-request those reports from the IRFPI provider report category. And today is the first announcement that this report retention time period change will be occurring. We will most certainly be giving additional reminders to you that this will be occurring prior to us implementing that change. So you would expect to see listserv announcements, MLN articles, a posting on the QTSO or Keys Technical Support Office website and a posting on the Welcome to the CMS Key Systems for Providers webpage. So we're going to give you the opportunity and reminder to save any reports you wish to save before we implement the report retention time period change. And finally, the technical user guides. I'd like to refer you to those technical user guides, that being the IRFPI Submission Users Guide which will provide you detailed information about submitting your data to the ASAP system and accessing and interpreting your final validation report, and the CASPER Reporting User's Guide, which will give you more information about those reports I had listed uh, that would, could be used to help you monitor your uh, submission of data uh, as required by the QRP program.
And certainly if you access the user guides and you still have questions or you're not sure what to do uh, from a technical perspective, please feel free to contact us at the CUTSO Help Desk. Um, I've included our contact information on the slide. We will assist with um, user ID questions, uh, questions about submitting your IRFPI data, or questions about the reports that are available in the CASPER reporting application. And that concludes my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Hello. I have Hello. a question about the um, use of dashes. And when you're saying, you know, if it's frequently used, we're subject to a penalty. Can you define frequency of use? And is it by quarter? Is it by year? How are you defining that? That is really more of a policy question. So I'm going to look to my CMS colleagues to answer that question. Okay, can you guys hear me? Um, the use of the dash is defined in the manual. It's like 80%, I mean, it's 80% or 100%. It's, it's whatever the formula is detailed in there. The, the point we want to drive home is you shouldn't be using the dash unless you absolutely have to. We don't want you to be inadvertently hit with that penalty. So, okay, sorry. We don't want you inadvertently hit with the penalty for the dash. We want to encourage you to use the dash only when you absolutely truly don't have the information that you need to complete the questions. But there is a percentage and a ratio that's detailed in your manual that tells you what that frequency is. Okay. okay. I'll make this quick. Um, the hospital-wide QRPs uh, uh, for staph influenza vaccination, MRSAs and C. diff, uh, uh, that are not case uh, reported, uh, do we know the timelines on that? I know the, the timelines when they're due, but is that coming to an end or is it going to regenerate or do we know? You know, that's not a question I can answer at this time. Could you write that down and I'd be happy to? I'll provide you a response to that question. Okay. And error message 1060, if a patient leaves prior to day three, uh, the ARD period, uh, which dates do we use? Do we go ahead and put the ARD period down? Or if they were only there Monday and Tuesday, but not Wednesday, do we just put Monday and Tuesday as the ARD day? And that question I can't answer either. Um, I'm more the technical side, okay. <laughs> and right. I can't answer those questions about how to code the assessment. If you'd like to write that question down, we'd be certainly happy to answer that for you. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Oh, hello. Um, with a number of fields now that facilities will have the opportunity to code the DASH but not receive the penalty, will the IRFPI, patient, or IRFPI assessment and error number XXXX report delete those from showing up in that report or will they all be included? So the IRFPI, or the IRFPI uh, error message uh, number XXX report will display the uh, assessments that received error 5004 for the time period that you request. So let's say you request for the last six months of 2015. Mm -hmm. If those items were associated to uh, AIR 5004 during that time, those will display on that report. As the I, if the items associated to AIR 5004 change over time, then those, those items may not receive AIR 5004, and so therefore they wouldn't display on the report. So just to clarify, so for the goals, if a facility only chooses to report one goal and all the rest of the goals have dashes, all, every one of their cases will show in that report? Um, no. Anne, did you answer that question earlier? So they're only required to answer one of the goals. So you would, I, I'll let Anne answer. Right, but, but then all the rest of them have to have dashes? I'll let Anne answer the question. That's more of a coding question than a technical question. So. Unless, Anne, would you rather they write the question down? Okay. All right. You might get that answer in a moment. Thank you, Anne.
Are there any other technical questions I can answer? I've not been very successful with the policy questions. If not, thank you very much for your attention and safe travels home.